Hello everybody, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and today we're gonna to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using the Hal Leonard Guitar Method, book one. Let's get started. Alright, so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at page 23 here in the Hal Leonard Guitar Method Book 1. But before we do, I will toss out a reminder, if you haven't already, please go check out my Patreon page. It's a wonderful resource and opportunity for you as you are learning to play guitar. I have a lot of great resources on there, including a weekly video series that is requested by patrons. So as a patron on my Patreon, uh, you can request topics that you wanna be covered in these videos. So if there's something that you're struggling with, a particular thing that you're looking to improve on on your guitar playing, you can request and I will do exclusive weekly videos with these concepts in mind for you as a patron on Patreon. So go check it out and consider becoming a patron today. All right, so on page 23, we're gonna learn two new songs, and they're going to include the three new notes that we learned in our previous lesson, which are A, B, and C, all found on the fifth string. The two new songs that we're gonna learn are Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho and Green Sleeves. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started with these. So I'm going to go ahead and start by playing Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho. I'm going to do it at 72 on the metronome. And then we'll walk through it. One, two, ready, and play. So this melody is great. It utilizes the new notes that we've learned. It's not overly challenging, but there are some things here that we can talk about. First off, if we look at the very first measure, we notice that we're utilizing this scale, right? We're walking from this A. It's kind of the first part of an A minor scale. Now this would be something that I would spend some time working on. Something that I might do and that I encourage my students to do sometimes with this particular exercise is to start with that first measure up to the first note of the second measure and then go in reverse those notes that you just played. practice that, the more you get comfortable with that, it's going to really help you throughout the remainder of the song. There's a note up above exercise 49 that says, practice these familiar melodies until you feel comfortable playing them. Remember to look ahead as you play so you can prepare for the next notes. That's really great advice. You're always kind of like looking ahead as you play. But the thing is, is you can't do that unless you are recognizing patterns and themes in the music. So. I should be able to look at this first measure and just very quickly see, oh, that's just a scale up from A. Right, I shouldn't have to be necessarily focusing on each note. And so if we take time to practice just that measure and really drill that scale, then when it comes up, we know, oh, I know what's happening here. I can be looking ahead to what happens next. All right, so as we move into the second measure, this first measure again, we have Good, now we know that the second measure is all on the note E. Again, this helps us as we're looking ahead. We just have quarter, quarter, half, note. Next measure, third measure, we have D. Quarter, quarter, half, note. And then again, E. Quarter, quarter, half, note. Oh, and then what do we have again? We look at the first measure of the second line. We have that scale again that we've already practiced and learned so it should be no problem. 
then it changes a little bit. We do have some E's here, but. And then in that second to last measure, we have uh, that scale walking down. Remember at the beginning when I said, hey, spend some time practicing that scale up and then also in reverse. Well, this is these are the notes in reverse. So the second to last measure. walk down that scale that we walked up in the first measure all right now the other thing to watch out for on that second measure of the second line is when we go down to that C so we have E E E C that's a great example of a place where I'm just gonna leave that E down I'm not gonna take it off or yeah the E I'm gonna leave the E down when I play the C and then I'm gonna come right back to that E and walk down the scale And there it is. It's not too challenging, and it's a nice little melody. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the chords for you at 72, and then you can play along with that and hear how the melody goes with the chords. So here we go, 72. This is the chords and melody to Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho. One, two, ready and play. And there it is. Let's go ahead and take the tempo up a little bit. We're gonna bump this up to 120. And here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, and. Nice, let's go ahead and add the chords to that. So here are the chords and melody together at 120 on the metronome, Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. One, two, oh, one, two, ready, play. And also, I'm sure you're aware already, but these chords are grayed out, so the book is not expecting you to play these chords right now. If you want to look ahead and try to learn them, absolutely please do. You can always look ahead and, and learn these chords if you would like, but as of now, the book hasn't taught you these chords yet. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next song here, which is Green Sleeves, very common uh, Christmas song. And... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just play it for you at 72 on the metronome, and then we're gonna go ahead and walk through that for you. All right, so here it is at 72. One, two, three, one, two.
right, so that is the melody to Green Sleeves. Now, we're gonna go ahead and walk through it at this tempo, and then I'm gonna play the chords for you as well. We're actually not gonna do a faster example because this melody generally floats around that tempo. It can go slightly faster, but it can also go slower. So if you need to start slower, please do. Uh, but this is a very comfortable tempo for this song. All right, so let's walk through this from start to finish. Now, a couple notes about this one. This song in the book by far is the longest song that we've learned, and probably the most complicated in terms of all the different types of things that are happening. So don't be alarmed if it takes you a little bit more time than some of the other exercises up to this point have. It's totally okay. Feel free to take your time. I'm gonna talk about some practice techniques that will hopefully help you to organize your efforts and be as efficient and effective as you can while working on this one. Okay, so right from the beginning, first thing to note is we have a pickup note, right? So it starts on beat three with that pickup. So a count in, obviously like what I did, it's gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, right? You start on beat three. So one, two. So I'm going to go that far. Now, that is from the beginning up to the first note of the fourth measure of the second line. Okay? That's what I would call the first musical phrase in this. It's a very clear musical phrase that's happening. And probably what I would recommend be kind of your first chunk that you focus on. This is You're just going to focus on this little spot and get it down. The nice thing is, is that there are themes from this chunk that repeat throughout. So once you really get this first chunk down, a lot of the other stuff should should come fairly easily. So starting out, we do have that we start on D, we go to this F, G, A. Now from here, I'm going to leave the A down, right? Now, something you'll notice, there, there are times, so we, we talk a lot about minimizing movements, right? Don't move fingers unless you have to. And this is kind of one of those times when, yes, you can leave the A down, but you'll notice that when you leave fingers down, you end up with that note ringing through, and sometimes you maybe don't want that. Right, you end up with all those notes ringing together. So something that you can do to, one, be efficient and keep your finger in place, but also not have the notes ringing through that you don't want, would be to do something like this, where I play the A. When I go to play the B, I'm leaving my A on the string, but I'm just letting up pressure a tiny bit so the A doesn't ring through. Right? just like that. So that's something you can play with. Although, if the note rings through a little bit in this case, it's really not that big of a deal, especially once you get the chords happening underneath and things like that, it's going to sound just fine. So in the second second full measure, again, we have A, B, A, G. Good, now, walking down, we've got that little kind of arpeggio. We've got G, E, C. Those are the three notes of a C major chord. C, E, and G. But we're kind of going down them in reverse. So you'll actually kind of notice that like that shape, we've talked about a C chord already. You've learned the C chord. So you're naturally kind of making that shape. So if it helps you to think of it that way, please do. The C chord is written above as a, the chord that would be played during that spot anyway. So I definitely think of that shape as I'm playing these last two measures. Right, my fingers just kind of naturally go there. Then we move into the second line. We have F, D, D. Good, 
good. Another example of a place where you can leave a note down. So in that measure, second measure of the second line, we play D, C, you can leave the C down. Because you're going to play E and then C again. Right? So you don't have to move that C until you play that low A. All right, and that gets us through that first chunk that we talked about that. I would just practice that over and over again until you're really comfortable with it, identifying all the little pieces that might be giving you trouble and then eventually take it from there. So then as we move on, we got this, uh, the last note of the fourth measure of the second line. It repeats what happens at the beginning. And then third line here. This is all the same as the beginning. And then it changes right here just a little bit. The fourth measure of the third line. But it's not too big a deal. It's, it's not challenging. Fourth line. Good, so that's the second chunk and it's almost identical to the first chunk. It only departs in the last few measures, the last four measures of that chunk. It changes just a little bit, but it's simpler than the first chunk. So it shouldn't give you too uh, much trouble. All right, so moving on, we're in the third measure of the fourth line, starting on this C. Now, getting into it, it might be a little bit of a problem, but again, the note that it gave us at the beginning of this lesson about thinking ahead is really going to help with this. Okay, so if we just start right on the fourth line, we have that D, 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 and then this big skip up to C, right? But think about it because you're playing those open Ds. You can be setting up your C while you're doing those so you're ready to just play right away and especially during that last D that you play on the second measure of the fourth line as that's ringing you're setting up and getting ready for the C now again that needs to be in time so hopefully you're practicing with a metronome making sure you stay right in time so that doesn't get behind but that's the idea so again starting on the fourth line we have D, D, D setting up for the C Another C shape, C chord shape. And then we have the fifth line. We have this F, three. And then the same thing, we have this low A and then a big skip up to C. Same concept as before, while that low A is ringing, you're setting yourself up, getting ready for the C, and then playing it in time. All right? Now, so that chunk that we just played from the third measure of the fourth line up to that low A, now it just kind of repeats again, right? So we have another high C, two, three. This is all the same. Then we have this similar thing that happened in the third line, the last two measures of the third line. It's exactly the same. One, two, three, one, two, off. Okay? So the trick to this one is going to be to utilize the practice technique of chunking, right? Breaking it into smaller chunks and focusing on those chunks and really mastering them, and then eventually putting those chunks together. What, what you'll notice is, especially if you really drill that first chunk, the rest of the song is gonna kinda naturally fall into place more easily than it might have if you just try to play from start to finish all the way through every time. All right, so that's that. They're all notes that we've learned, all things that we've talked about, nothing overly challenging, although it is longer than a lot of the songs that we've learned so far, and it does incorporate a lot of the concepts that we've talked about. So take your time on it, be patient, and it will definitely come along. All right, 
So let's go ahead and add the chords to that so you can hear what it sounds like with the chords. Again, these chords are grayed out. You haven't learned some of these chords like D minor, A minor, uh, F, but again, if you wanna look ahead, feel free to do so on these chords. So here we go, 72 on the metronome. Here's the chords and the melody to green sleeves. One, two, three, one, two. So that is our lesson for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and stay tuned for our next lesson. We'll see you next time. Thanks.